after developing the method of iteration now we are going to do the second method of solving the difference equations this is the general method or the formula method in which we will develop the formula primarily and then we will apply it to solve some numerical situation there are two possibilities in it one is the value of a not equal to minus one this is the first possibility that we are going to solve here in this first part of this uh, uh, formula method now we know that behind uh, developing a formula the purpose is to uh, come up with a time path which is the solution of the given differential equation so just recalling components of the time path if time path is this then there will be a deviation component and there will be equilibrium value now we start with a homogeneous uh, difference equation uh, that will give us a certain form that we can further use because the uh, general solution of a homogeneous case is actually the complementary function for the non-homogeneous case. This is something we did in differential equations and we are going to follow the same procedure here. So we start with the homogeneous case in which you can see the value of c is equal to 0 as per the standard form. You can see in the uh, standard form c is on the right hand side as the constant so before we solve it we have to normalize it because uh, with y t plus 1 there is 1 as the coefficient so uh, it has to be normalized as per the standard form so we divided it by m and on both sides we, we can see m is divided as a result we get this this is now normalized because the coefficient of y t plus in 1 is equal to 1 so now we can apply the iterative method that we already know since the formula is yet to be developed and once we develop it then we, we will be able to use it so the table is developed in which we do the repetition we have done this before uh, you would you should uh, refer to the last video in which we learned two uh, examples of the uh, iterative method however just for a reminder t will be substituted with 0 1 2 and 3 so you can pause the video and see that how this value substituted wherever there was uh, the possibility of uh, putting the value of t so after solving it and you know re uh, realigning it and finally converting it in a way which is adjacent with the initial condition we can generalize this this pattern is simply that we have t in the subscript and we have the um, uh, uh, ratio of the coefficients and then we have t in its power and then we have the initial condition so let us see that have we developed the same thing yes we have developed the same uh, solution by using the iterative method so this is not the final thing because this is um, uh, uh, the solution of the homogeneous case this we can use as the uh, complementary function of the um, non-homogeneous case uh, secondly let's see that how we can make uh, more sense of this expression this is that expression that uh, solution that we have found uh, we can write it like this that is uh, b raised to the power t or this because this would be more readable as compared to this form and if we look at this expression it is quite similar to what we had in the differential equations this was the solution of the homogeneous case of differential equations and it is quite adjacent instead of a we we still have a but instead of b we have an exponential function that was there in the differential equations and the exponent was there here the power is there uh, exponent is there and it is just t not uh, minus r t so there is relevance because both of them are time paths however one is of the differential equation and the other one is of difference equation so acknowledging this fact we can go ahead by also admitting that b can play a critical role here just like uh, r that is the root played uh, a critical role in the dynamic stability of the root because uh, we have bt here b raised to the uh, exponent of t so t is not to be found by us t will be from 0 to infinity 
So B is that value that can determine the fate of the dynamic stability of the time path. So B is something that we will remember. Now we come back to the uh, complementary function that we are going to develop by using the uh, solution that we have developed here of the homogeneous difference equations. So the solution is now going to be used in our uh, complementary function in which we drop the uh, constant and we use this uh, left hand side. So uh, before I put it here in, in place of yt, I also have to transform it for yt plus 1. We have to add simply 1 in the uh, subscript. Uh, in this box we have done this and in this box we have done this. On both sides we have added 1 to make it uh, suitable for substitution here. So in place of yt plus 1 I am putting its value and in, in place of yt I am putting its value that we have developed on the basis of the solution that we found in the last step. Here we are substituting it. So now we can simplify it using simple algebra because this is a common factor in both of them. We extract it and we get rid of it because on the other side there is 0. We are left with b plus a is equal to 0. That can be rearranged in this way that it becomes b is equal to minus a. Uh, we have the value of a from the given equation. We just have to put a negative sign to get this value of b. Now we remember that the general solution of reduced form complete of the complete equation is the complementary function. That is, um, uh, as we have mentioned, that the general solution of the reduced form of the complete equation. That is the reduced form that we have used here by dropping z, uh, value of c. We have found that uh, this is going to give us the complementary function. Here we can see the uh, solution complementary function of the reduced form equation is going to give us the uh, value of complementary function. So we are going to develop the complementary function from the solution of the uh, reduced form equation. So uh, the value of b as we found was minus a in the last step. Let's just look at it again. Value of b is minus a. So let us uh, uh, put it in in this place. And now it becomes this. This is the complementary function as we just uh, developed the equivalence in the last step. So we have found the value of yc. Now finally we need the value of yp which is the particular integral or the solution of the given differential equation, the equilibrium value. And we remember that in first order differential equation we have been putting it um, uh, equal to constant that is the solution is either a constant or a variable. So this is that first possibility that we are trying again here in case of difference equation. If yt is equal to k then yt plus 1 would be equal to k as well because t can be incremented here but there is no t on the other side. Now we can put the values of yt plus 1 and yt. So this is k and this is k. Uh, k taken as a common factor, we will have uh, the value of k and finally when we have the value of k, we can say that this is the solution of the given differential equation because it is equal to yt and a certain value of y is this that would justify the equation by pr providing its solution. Is k was opted as a solution of yt, so the value of k can be considered as the solution of yt. So the solution is written with yp instead of yt. So by summing both of these, that is uh, the value of yc and value of yp, we can come with the uh, final solution, which is the general solution. yc is something we found in the last step and here we found the value of yp. So we are adding them and by adding them we get the general solution. However, we remember that definite solution is something we are always in search of. So we are going to find that as well. But before we go there, there is a caveat that 
in this uh, formula a should not be equal to minus 1 because if it becomes minus 1 the denominator will become 0 1 minus 1 will be 0 and this term will become undefined so this is something we don't want especially in our economic analysis so a1 is not equal to uh, a is not equal to minus 1 so now we can uh, develop the definite solution by putting t is equal to 0 here here we have t is equal to 0 you can see that this is the um, the substitution of t in the form of 0 now you can solve it easily because this is simply the algebraic steps that you have been doing and the purpose is to find the value of a that is to definitize it so rearranging gives us the value of a that we can put in the general solution so here you can see that this general solution is now going to be converted into definite solution once we put the value of a, a here so after putting the value we get the definite solution of the first order differential equation where the value of a is not equal to minus 1 with this stipulation this is the suitable formula for the uh, first order differential equation and we have proved this formula by starting with the homogeneous case and then using that solution uh, in the complementary function development and then we found the particular integral and by passing through these steps we have uh, developed a formula to solve the first order differential e difference equation uh, with general method where a is not equal to minus 1 and now we do a formula of it the formula uh, a numerical example with this formula this is a given difference equation in which uh, y t plus 1 is there we have y t and we have the values of a and c as well because you can see in place of c we have 1 and in place of a we have 5 we are also given the initial condition it tells us that we can find the uh, definite solution of the given difference equation so the value of a is highlighted as well as the value of c and uh, since the value of a is uh, minus 5 and it's not equal to minus 1 we can now resort to this formula where uh, which we have developed in our uh, current video uh, just to make things more readable i have written it here that it is the definitized form of the arbitrary constant because this was actually equal to a and now we know the value of y naught which we can put here we know the value of c we know the value of a and in this way we can find all these values and now finally we have this um, step of uh, uh, set of solution uh, steps which you can solve easily because it is simple algebra and once if you do it you will get this which is the time path of the um, difference equation that we are trying to solve here so we can write it like this the interpretation because this is the given differential equation this is the solution and here the um, equilibrium is a static equilibrium because there is no t in it so let's see the solution uh, the diagram of it here you can see that we have developed a diagram of this certain differential equations time path let's gather it in one uh, view you can see that uh, we have um, a diagram which is having this shape uh, which is a stepped diagram because it is uh, a certain a set of certain steps this is the first one second one third one fourth one so th there are various steps in it because this is discrete analysis and when we have discrete variables we don't get a smooth curve we get uh, a, um, a kind of diagram in which there are gaps as you can see this uh, dotted line is actually showing gaps so we have gaps in it so th the time path is plotted and from the diagram it can be judged that if we are dealing with a difference equation or a differential equation which here is visible that it is a difference equation Thank you.